Hey everybody, it's Dana and welcome back to my blog and YouTube channel. Today we're going to be playing with more of the Gina K Designs Glitz Glamour Mist. I absolutely love this product and today we're going to be playing with the white color gel. We're also going to be using a stencil from Simon Says Stamp, some Gina K Premium Cardstock and this Green Envy Flock as well as outline leaves, I believe this is called, from Simon Says Stamp. So this um, die is called the Outline Clustered Leaves. So let's go ahead and get started. Now before I start laying any of that pretty gel down, I do wanna add a little bit of the Pixie Spray to the back of this stencil. This Pixie Spray is wonderful when you have very detailed stencils and you need them to stay in place. All I'm going to do is spray a little bit of this onto the back and it just makes your stencil a little bit tacky um, where when you lay it on your cardstock, it kind of holds, but it does not rip. You can see the faint look of the spray on this and you should just give it a minute or so for it to dry and then you can go ahead and pull that over to your cardstock. You can see how detailed this stamp is, I mean the stencil is, and I really want it to stay on that paper. So now I'm going to bring in that white cardstock, and again, this is Gina K white cardstock, and I'm going to go ahead and flip this stencil down and place it right over. Now when you use the Pixie Spray, you really don't need to use the tape anymore, the purple tape or painter's tape or micro pore tape, because this works fantastic. All I'm doing is lightly rubbing the stencil over my paper, just to make sure that all those little bits and pieces are connected to that paper. So here is that gorgeous Gina K White Glitz Glimmer Gel. I swear there's such a mouthful every time I say it. <laughs> But look how gorgeous this gel is. And it's very, very smooth and easy to apply. It's not as thick as embossing paste. Um, it just definitely has a different um, consistency to it, but it's very, very easy to apply. So as you can see, I just have a palette knife and I just grabbed out some of that gorgeous sparkle and started putting it down onto that stencil. I always like to work at the top and kind of work my way down in long strokes to try to just get an even consistent color down. Now I don't want to be too thick with this because that's going to take um, it longer to dry, but I do want to make sure that I have enough and it's filling into all those tiny little grooves. This is probably one of my favorite stencils to use when I want a very nice background where I don't have to really add too much more to the card panel. So I'll come up from the bottom just to make sure I'm filling in those little holes. I'm going to scrape back in that product because I don't need to waste it. Now I'm coming in with one of my favorite tools. This is the Stencil Pal. And I'm lightly going across that panel one more time. And you're gonna see how much product was still left on there. So I'm gonna go ahead and scrape that back into the jar and I lightly go over it again, and this is going to ensure I have a nice even layer of that color down. Now it's really hard to see, obviously, because it's white on white, but once I lift this up, you're really going to be able to see that gorgeous sparkly detail that you will get from this dye. Again, I'm gonna make sure I scoop all of that off of the lid so my leg does not get tacky, and um, gummy when I close it up and then I have to reuse it again. So now I'll put that off to the side and now I'm going to grab myself a paper towel. I wanna to immediately wet my palette knife. So that's just some water I keep in a bottle off to the side on my desk. I'm gonna clean that palette knife off so I don't have any of that residue left over. And I'm also going to do the same thing for my stencil pal. I wanna make sure I clean that off immediately. Now when I go in and I can pull up any extra pieces that might still be sitting there, and I will grab my palette knife to help me pull this up. Again, you guys have heard me say this a thousand times, this is like Christmas day to me. I love removing a stencil. That stencil I'm going to make sure that I put in a hot tub of water, but look how gorgeous that design is. 
It's not going to compete really with anything else I put on a card, but it's a nice sparkly little background. I'm going to set this side to dry and I went ahead and put that stencil into some hot water. Next, I'm going to bring in the Deco Foil Flock Transfer Sheets. I'm just going to go ahead and pull out one of these panels. And I love this flock stuff. If you did not see my other video using the flock, I'll link it up here below and in the description box. I'm going to take that outline cluster leaves die. I have been wanting this die forever and I'm so glad it came back in stock. I'm just going to trim down my flock just so I have enough to cut out that little um, cluster. And this, to me, this cluster gives you just such a nice look on a card. Debbie Hughes has used it a lot and I have fallen in love every time I see it on one of her cards. Now I'm gonna go ahead and run this through my Gemini Junior. That's going to guarantee me that I get a really good cut through this. So I'll go ahead and place that down. And again, if you have not seen the video where I die cut with a rotary mat, I'll make sure to link that up and below as well. And don't forget to hit the bell to make sure you know when I have new videos up. Now I went ahead and I popped all of that out and I'm just trying to get this last piece out and look how gorgeous that is. Just a nice little piece of greenery and I can save all of these leaves for another project later. So since I'm a little bit impatient, <laughs> I went ahead and grabbed my Ranger heat tool just to help this dry. Now, as you can see, I'm constantly moving that heat tool because I don't wanna burn that gel, but I do wanna speed up the drying process. You can sit it aside and wait maybe like five, 10 minutes or so, and it should be dry. The longest may be 30, and then you'll be perfectly fine. But I'm in a rush. Like I want to guys, I want to show you guys this card. So after I went ahead and dried that, it's all nice and dry. And now I can come back in with that gorgeous leaf. And look how pretty that looks. I have that sparkly background in the back and just that simple, beautiful cluster of leaves going across my card. I'm going to pull out my Lawn Fawn uh, pen glue. And I'm just going to start dabbing some of this glue on the back. Now, if you wanted to, you could use adhesive spray on this, but the only thing with adhesive spray is sometimes it gets gunked up in those larger areas. So I have a tendency not to use it as often, but if you work quick enough, you'll be able to get this down onto the card panel before any of your glue dries. And I'm like lightly going in, like doing little polka dots and doing little lines because I really don't want there to be too much glue on this where I then go to set it down and it has glue like squirting out from underneath it. So I'm gonna flip that over. Now I did not put a lot of glue towards the bottom. I just want to get the top and the middle kind of settled on. And then I can go back in and finish up the bottom. But this allows me the opportunity if I wanted to shift over just that little bit of um, foliage. I had the opportunity to do that before I actually set it down on the paper. So again, I'm just putting a little bit of that glue and I'm just gonna peel this back just a little bit to make sure I have all of those leaves done. This to me works a little bit better than me adding all the glue at one time and not having an opportunity to maybe shift the bottom of the leaves left or right. Now I can press that down and I'm gonna go ahead all the way back up and press it really into the paper because we do have a lot of texture with that um, glitter gel or glimmer gel. So I'll press that in, make sure I have a good contact and then this part of the card is going to be done. I mean, look how gorgeous that is. It's a very simple and simplistic card. I do want to add a sentiment, but obviously I don't want to put it right on top of this uh, glitter gel, glimmer gel. Oh, I keep saying that wrong. So I'm going to grab out that hello, and I'm going to stamp this in the same color as my little leaves. So I'm going to grab out that flock, and put down that sentiment. 
So I'm not going to waste what's ever left on the top here. I can always save the bottom, but I'm going to make sure I stamp my sentiment on this flock. So I'm just not wasting that. So I grabbed in my large Misty and I'm going to set this in because I do know with the flock, because it does have some texture to it, I am going to have to stamp this sentiment more than once. So I'm going to get my magnets ready to hold that in place. And then for my ink today, I'm going to use the Gina K Amalgam ink. And I believe the color of that Gina K Amalgam ink is jet black. So I have a little cube of this, and this is going to help me get that sentiment onto that flock. Now, like I said, because this has texture to it, you're not gonna get away with just like one stamping of it. And I'm gonna show you here. So I'm gonna go ahead and press down, lightly press, because I don't wanna mess up the crispness of that sentiment. But you'll see when I pull it up, it's a very, very soft black, almost like a gray. And of course, I need it to be darker. Now for me, stamping it three times was like the magic number to me. If you want it to be a little bit darker, then I would suggest maybe stamping it two more times. But as long as I can see some of that black on there, I'm okay with that. And I'm going to make sure that I heat set this. So as you can see, I'm pressing down really firmly this time, just kind of putting my palm right over that area. And now I have the dark depth that I need from this without having to stamp it one more time. So that um, color of black is fine for me. I'm gonna go ahead and move everything out of the way. And before I put this on my card, I am going to heat set it. Now you gotta be very quickly on this because you don't wanna burn that flock either. So that's the reason I'm using my Ranger tool and not my Wagner heat gun. That to me would have been a little bit too hot to use on my flock. Next, I'm going to bring in my Tonics trimmer and I'm just going to trim this down. I think I told you guys maybe in the last video, this has become like my favorite trimmer. It is portable. It sits right in the corner of my uh, desk now. And I don't think I'm going to go back to any other trimmer but this one. At first I was like, I don't know if I like the swinging arm because I'm so used to the blades. But to me, this gives me a really great crisp cut. And even if I mess up and I have to shift it over again, I still find that I can get things very even on any kind of sentiment strip using this Tonic Studio uh, trimmer. I'll make sure to link it in the description box below where I will also link all the products that I use for today. So I'm just gonna line that up because I wanna take a little bit more of the top of that off so my hello is a little bit more centered in that little square. All right, now since that's done, I'm going to bring in my EK Success scoring tool. This is a new purchase for me and I'm really glad I got it. I actually keep it in my top drawer of my desk now and it's very easy for me now to um, make indentations on where I need to fold my cardstock compared to me using my Fiskars cutter for that. Now to get a crisp line for this, I like to go back to my Teflon bone folder and make my good crease with that. To me, that bone folder just really gets everything nice and flat, but it's a little bit too big to get into the grooves of my EK Success um, little scoring buddy. All right, so now since that is done, I can go ahead and start putting my card together. So I will bring in just that white card base and my other piece, which is totally dry now. And look how pretty that looks. It's a very nice soft card. And then my little sentiment can hang off right there. Now I do want to trim down all those little leaves that are hanging off. I don't want that being a distraction on my card. And I just want my card to be really clean and simple. So I'll just go ahead and use my scissors and trim off any of the extra leaves that are going past that uh, card panel. And I did trim this card panel down so that I could have a white border around this image. So it's not hard to trim off, just grab yourself some sharp scissors and then you can go ahead and get any pieces out of the way. 
Now I can go ahead and mount this down to um, my white card base. And this card base is also from Gina K. I grab my ATG gun and I'm going to put a good amount of adhesive on this because anytime we're using gel or even embossing paste or uh, as our card begins to dry, it gets a little bit booed. So I'm just going to make sure that I use a good amount of adhesive on the back of this. So once I put it down, I'm not going to have any bowed areas. I will use my grid mat to help me line that panel up. And again, I just want a nice, clean, soft white border around the end. I'll go ahead and press that down. And now for that hello, I'm going to use some deco foil double sided foam adhesive. That was a mouthful for me. I love using this because it's, it's um, foam that has adhesive on both sides. So once you put down whatever's on top, you peel off the backing and it becomes like a sticker. So I'll press that down. I'm going to go ahead and swing over that cover paper just so I don't mark up any of that flocking when I go to trim around this. I keep pieces of this foam adhesive right in my top drawer of my desk and it really comes in handy when I don't want to use a whole bunch of my 3M tape, you know, having to cut it down to fit small spaces. I can just grab these little pieces here and I'm going to get an even height on my sentiment. So I'll peel off that backing and then I'll go ahead and place down my hello. I think I'm going to place it down a little bit lower, right between those clusters of leaves right there. And I'll go ahead and press that into place. Now I do wanna bring a little bit of black to this card. So I am just going to grab just a few sequins. Now you can leave this plain, you can add in even some of the clusters back to add a little bit more green to this card. But again, I wanted to keep it just really nice and simple. So if you guys would like to see me use any more of the uh, Glitz Glimmer Gel, <laughs> let me know if you want me to create more backgrounds for you guys in the comments below. I love stenciling and I love making glittery backgrounds. So any of this Gina K product from ThermaWeb is going to be phenomenal for that. So I've just put on three little um, sequins, black sequins, again, just to pull in some of that black from that card. And I did use a little picky tool that I picked up off Amazon, as well as my Lawn Fawn glue. And there we have it, everybody. Isn't that a beautiful, simple card? I wanna thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. If you guys like this video, give me a thumbs up, give me a comment, and like and share it with your friends. I will be back in another video soon. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. I really appreciate it, and have a great day. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.